But yeah, man, welcome back to the Snake Trap Sessions. I am so excited to be back. Beautiful day. Well, well. What is good, everybody? It's your boy MJ up in the building. Welcome back to another Snake Trap Sessions vlogs. This is your first time tapping in. I'm your boy MJ. Do your boy a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification icon. That way, on top of every single vlog I drop here on the Snake Trap Sessions vlog channel. I want to say much love to everyone who's been following me on the podcast. Been having some amazing guests lately. I even dropped a solo podcast recently. So if you haven't checked that out yet, please do your boy a favor. Go down the link. Subscribe to the Trap Talk with MJ podcast channel. And make sure you check out the last few episodes because they've been heat but what is good guys i'm super excited i'm actually going to be heading out the door right now i got to run over to fedex to pick up some heavy packages and then i also need to hear up and get back and check on these super dwarf eggs because one of them pipped yes that's right so we're going to cut open these super dwarf eggs we're going to check out how they look we want to make sure that they all look good inside and i also want to show you updates on the other breeding projects that i have here going on in the trap what i'm going to do is i'm going to head over to fedex packages get back over here we're going to go over some of the breeding updates i'm going to show you the reticulate eggs and then we'll dip into this new heat just touching down to the trap today oh my god i am so excited one of these snakes means so much to me i never even thought in my life i would own this snake and i can't believe i'm about to go pick it up right now oh my god this is about to be an amazing vlog guys if you're just not tapping in like i said hit that like button be ready because it's about to go down Cheap. Gotta love it. It's not all the time where you get three different packages sent to FedEx Hub Station and they all arrive with no issues. Shout out to FedEx. All right, so here we are inside the traps, but as you can see, all the snakes are out of the boxes. They all got their hydration in. They're all put away inside their enclosures. And I will show you what I got. I wanna show you on this first part of the vlog is I wanna go ahead and show you guys the update with some of these snakes that I've never bred before. I give you guys the breeding update on these snakes. Have super dwarf eggs that are inside the incubator. We're gonna check those out last, but we actually have my green tree python, Mimi, who just had her pre-lay shed about two weeks ago. So she's actually nesting and getting ready to lay her clutch of eggs. So what I thought we could do is go, go check up on Mimi together and let's see how she's doing and how she's settling in and getting ready to lay this clutch. Mm, somebody took a little mess. So if you guys can guess, Mimi is the one with privacy. Before I actually show you guys how Mimi's doing, I kind of want to show you the sire, one that was able to get Mimi to uh, go the distance. So I want to go and show you the male that I paired her up to. This is also an undocumented BIAC. I've had him since he was a little red Neo, so going on four years now. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, he just turned five this year, and typically four or five years is when these condors are ready to breed. And I'm very excited that he got the job done. Very beautiful looking Biak. I love the black going on inside his scalations. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens, man. But good job, buddy. I'm uh, very excited to announce that after 2022, I will no longer be breeding chondros inside plastic tubs. All right. I mean, no disrespect to anybody who does, but message. So if you guys can see here, guys, there's no perches. I took out all the perches. You know, once you guys track the number of days after ovulation and prelay shed, 
Uh, there's a certain point in time where you want to remove all the perches. You want to put maybe some sort of hiding spot in the corner, like a hide in the corner. I put my thermostat low because I want it to at least be 80 on the floor. So remove the water bowl. Some people like to leave their water dishes in. When Mimi laid her clutch two years ago, I had a water dish this little on the floor and she laid directly on top of it. The water that was inside the deli cup still over, overfilled and went all over the eggs. Most of the eggs went bad and only got one to hatch. I don't want to go through that this year. That's why it's all about learning from your mistakes. And uh, yeah, I have an elevated water cup, which I see her come out and take drinks from. So I know that's working. But yeah, let's take a look at Mimi. Let's see how she's doing. Oh yeah, she's she's nice and nice and uh, coiled up. Look how beautiful she looks. I'm so happy for her. All right, well, good luck, Mimi K. Okay? Yeah, I don't want to mess with her too much, guys. But as you can see, she's doing her thing. I'm very excited. Uh, today's date is April 13th, I believe. 17th through the 21st is when she should lay. So. Let's have our fingers crossed for Mimi here. This is going to be her second clutch, and let's hope this one is more successful than the last one. Cheek. Oh, man, my nerves are through the roof. I am so excited just to see what the outcome is. You know, mainly with the chondros, I just want Mimi to be okay. I don't want her to go egg bound. I don't want any eggs to get stuck in her. I just want her to successfully get all those eggs out of her. That way I know she's okay. And then whatever happens from there, happens from there, man. But like I said, let's keep our fingers crossed for Mimi. We're gonna go check out one of my boa constrictors. My sharp sun glow is actually due to drop her litter of babies in the next 10 to 14 days. So why don't we go check out my boa? Let's see how she's doing and let's see how she's dealing with this pregnancy. And there she is. She's due April 25th and she was paired to my Hypo Blood Double Het T Positive Albino Tiger. And we could check him out too, but yeah, she's uh, you know, she's been eating throughout this whole time. I haven't fed her in, in about two weeks because uh, you know, last few weeks I was told you just don't want to feed them. But yeah, she's been she's been handling food, you know, small meals, nothing big, but let's see what happens. Fingers crossed, and let's uh, check out the sire to this project that I have going on. This is the sire that I paired her to. This is my Hypo Blood Double Het T Positive Albino Tiger. Really awesome guy. The reds underneath him is crazy. Like he has he has an insane red belly. But gorgeous animal, man. Proud of you, buddy. See what happens. All right, so that's the BOA project. Very excited for that. Like I said, April 25th, she should be dropping those BOA babies. Let's see what happens. My first BOA litter, can you believe it? Leading to my very first Super Dwarf reticulated python clutch inside the incubator. I had my first pip yesterday and I went ahead and cut all the eggs just to see how they're doing. And they're doing great. So why don't we check out these Super Dwarf eggs, which was, this was a collaboration project I did with my boy Andrew Acevedo. The I, Super Dwarf clutch. There they all are. I mean, obviously you can't really see what they're gonna fully look like because they're still in the egg. But 26 beautiful, healthy, reticulated pythons, man. Now, if you guys are wondering what that green substance is, apparently, according to Andrew Acevedo, anything that's marble, genetic marble in it, is gonna have this green gook in it, apparently. I don't know, that's what he said. But he told me, when you're cutting the eggs open, don't panic if you've seen this green, slimy looking stuff, because that's just a part of the marble genetic, I guess, when it's, when it's being produced, I mean, I don't know. Don't know what to tell you. But I could tell you that all 26 of these eggs are good. Everything is alive and well so far. Um, and these should be crawling out of the egg here in the next couple days to a week or so. We'll see what happens, man. But I'm going to keep you guys updated. I am so excited to share this kind of success with you guys. Super dwarfs mean a lot to me. And uh, for me to uh, be reproducing a line that my buddy Andrew uh, was really passionate about this right here means everything to me, man. So thank you to my boy, Andrew Acevedo, and uh, my mentor, Eric Lee, both my mentors right there, and I appreciate it so much. And uh, I'll keep you guys updated on these eggs, man, but this is so awesome, so sick. All right, guys, so that's all I'm gonna have on this vlog, but stay tuned, because the part two is gonna be revealing all the new heat that I just got in the mail from three different people, okay? I'm gonna show you each and every single snake that I got. This is something you don't wanna miss. So before you guys head out, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification icon so you stay on top of every single vlog that I drop, and make sure you smash that like button, man. But this is a wrap for this vlog, and I'll catch you guys here, the Snake Trap Sessions vlogs, and I'm out. Cheers!